thread going on at the same time. I want to bring you back to something you said earlier that you sort of glossed over, but you were talking about quantum physicists right. getting everything wrong. So, are you, are you I, talking go, about so I flew to Moscow. No, and I've debunked that in a book called The God Problem, How a Godless Cosmos Creates, that has five heresies. And heresy number one is that, one, uh, is that uh, A does not equal A. That's Aristotle's primary law of identity. No, it's not always true. Um, one of the laws is the theory of entropy is so fucking wrong Explain that it just entropy defies to people the, that might not okay, know Okay, entropy exactly. means that all, everything is falling apart constantly. And that in order to make something positive happen, you have to shed more negative energy, not really negative energy, more dispersed waste energy. And in fact, the universe doesn't look work like that. The universe, uh, in the very beginning, it formed quarks from from nothing but motion. Quarks from motion? Are you kidding me? Yeah. The first things from movement? Are you joshing? No. And then the quarks had to get together in groups of three because this is a profoundly social universe, so they couldn't survive. And one form of quark like this with one up and two down or something like that is a neutron. And the other direction, three quarks, is a proton. And all of this is anti-entropic. And then what do all of these billiard balls do? What do all these particles do? 380,000 years later, they begin to sweep themselves together in these massive social agglomerations that look like big potatoes. And those are the beginnings of galaxies before they form their spiral arms and stuff like that. Uh, and then within the, the spiral arms of these galaxies, gravity balls <clears throat> are competing with each other to see who's the biggest gravity ball and the biggest wins. And what does he do to the losers? He swallows them and gets even bigger, which makes it possible for that gravity ball to confront another bunch of gravity balls and beat them out for size and swallow them. Eventually, what happens is you get so much gravity and so much matter in this gravity ball that the gravity ball explodes. That's called a sun, a star. And around it are smaller gravity balls that manage to hold their own in competitions. And they're planets and moons. How the hell do you go even this short distance into the life of a galaxy that's been around for 13.7 billion years with precisely the opposite of entropy happening? What is the official definition of entropy? How's it defined by Webster's Dictionary? Do you know? It's usually a weasel definition. Weasel? <laughs> yeah. In other words, it's deliberately obscure. Ah, because um, it's such a weird subject? Yeah. Um, mm, that's funny. But every priesthood has a shibboleth. A shibboleth is a magic word. If you can't pronounce it, you're dead. Ah. And so every tribe wants you to believe in something that's impossible. Remember the Red Queen or the White Queen right. in Alice in Wonderland said, sometimes I dream up six impossible things before breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to pass the test by showing that you believe in something that's obviously fatuously wrong. And that's the, and the shibboleth for being considered a legitimate scientist is preaching allegiance to pledging allegiance to entropy. Pull it up. Let me see what it says here. Okay. It says, uh, a measure of the unavailable energy in a closed thermodynamic system that is also usually considered to be a measure of the system's disorder. That is a property of the system's state and that varies directly with any reversible change in heat in the system and inversely with the temperature of the system broadly the degree of disorder or uncertainty in a system. So that's what they're saying it is, the degree of disorder or uncertainty in a system. Now, obviously, that's a very lucid explanation, mm. and you could recite it to a five-year-old and he'd understand exactly <laughs> what you were saying, or no, to your it grandmother. it is a little weasley. It is a little weasley, <laughs> right. It's very weasley. It has lots of outs. So my book, The God Problem, How a Godless Cosmos Creates, debunks that along with a bunch of other um, assumptions in current science. Why does that assumption exist, do you believe? Because in the 19th century, when this was formulated, um, the metaphor of the day was the steam engine. It was the hot new technology. It was to the, the 19th century what computers are to the 22nd century or whatever we're living in now. Uh, the 21st century, sorry. And um, so what they realized was you take this steam and you push it into a piston, and it throws that piston up into the air, and then the piston comes back down again. But then there's waste. The 
steam then has lost its energy and it comes out of an exhaust valve and you put in more hot steam, right? Um, so this was a theory about the waste that comes out of the steam engine. But now that we don't have, I mean, cars, yes, they produce exhaust. Now, would you say that... Um, solar power. And solar power does not produce exhaust. Right. So where's the entropy? Right. But where's the entropy in that story of the universe I was would telling you? Would it be the you? degradation of the batteries? Because, I mean, they are all lithium-ion yes, or whatever. that could be, but it's a, it's a squidge compared to the construction of a sun. Right. It's a squidge compared to the construction of a galaxy. Mm. And... All that random stuff in the universe, all those random particles, first of all, they're not random. They all participate in something. The universe rings like a gong in its early days. It has pressure waves. That means that these elementary particles are scooching together and forming a wave. Is that a technical term? Yes. And, <laughs> and then they're scooching apart and they're forming a trough. And then they're scooching together again. And that wave ripples across the cosmos the way that you see waves rippling across the Pacific when you're flying to Hawaii. Um, is that entropic? Is that disorder constantly increasing? No, it's the very opposite. What the universe does, it, it takes every form of waste and turns it into an opportunity. It, I mean, what we call this place Earth. What are we naming it for? The excreta of worms, the shit of worms, because they produced what we call soil. Well, think of the meaning of that word soil. When something is soiled, what is it like? It's not covered with earthy loam, it's dirty. Um, so, and we call it dirt when it's in the earth. So we are taking this entropic stuff, the shit that came out of worms, and we're farming in it. And plants are growing in it, trees are growing in it. Flowers are growing in it. Is that entropy? Is that a continual uh, slide toward disorder? It's the very opposite. It's a continual slide toward order and higher degrees of form. How has this theory been received? Um, well, uh, or your interpretation of that's entropy. a good question because um, I really have no answer. Um, the people who I sent the book to in the early days, all of them except, well, including a Nobel Prize winner and I think three MacArthur Genius Award winners, all said, this is a great book. And one compared it to Charles Lyell's History of the Earth, which gave Darwin a lot of ideas, and to Darwin's Origin of the Species, and asked, is this really a great book like those two books? And the answer has been, yes. And this is the Lucifer Principle? No, this is this the was... God problem, how a godless okay. cosmos creates. 